opportunity to teach the Word of God, uh, but it's a joy. Uh, the Word of God happens to be wells of living water, and the more you keep bringing it up, the more you get to keep for yourself. And so uh, the way to increase in truth and increase in the kingdom uh, is, is for us to uh, study the Word. And all the people said, uh, when angels in, intervene in, in human affairs, uh, when, do, when do they and what do they do? Um, a God uh, is all intelligent. There's no doubt about that. He, he knows all things. And uh, we understand that he uses part of his creation uh, to discipline or to inform some of his other creation. And, and so uh, uh, angels are very, very apparent in what we, what, what we do. Uh, when Adam fell in sin, and it, it was worse than that, it was total rebellion. Uh, we don't know how long he'd been in a state of rebellion, but uh, um, human beings still have that uh, Adamic nature within them, that if you let them touch power, they go, maybe they go crazy with it. Uh, I, I used to notice when I was uh, a much younger person that when a person had a position of power in, in, in a church group, and sometimes politically also, when he was relieved from that power, he usually died very soon after that. And I used to study it, and then especially among religious leaders. Uh, if they had a position of power like a district superintendent, and they were in it 10 or 12 years or more, uh, when they were relieved from it, they just died. Uh, that was their life. And when it was taken from them, uh, they felt like there was nothing else to live for. Power is, is a very strong force. And, and not many people know how to, to handle it. Uh, I have heard that out of a hundred people, uh, if they became very wealthy, that only six of them would know how to handle it correctly. That the 94 would just go crazy and do all kinds of silly stuff and possibly uh, lose their souls. And, and so power, and of course money is power, and a job is power, but so few people seem to know how to handle it. And that began uh, with, with Adam, of course. In, in Genesis chapter 3, this is on page 40 of your teaching syllabi. Uh, and, and Genesis 3 and 24, so he drove, and, and that hit me so strong this week as I was, he didn't just ask him to leave. The Bible says he drove. There, there might have been some real contests right there too saying this thing belongs to me and I'm not leaving and you might have made it but I own it you see and so it says he drove Adam it just calls him man and uh, and he placed it at the, at the east gate of the garden of, of Eden a, a cherubim one of the very very selective uh, uh, created creatures it was the cherubim uh, for the glory and the majesty of God stayed on the Ark of the Covenant. There was a cherubim on each side. Uh, but a cherubim was placed and uh, had a sword in his hand which turned all directions to keep Adam out of that garden and away from the tree of life. Had he gotten to the tree of life, which no doubt that's what he was fighting for, he would have lived forever. He would have had the eternality of God himself, you see. And so God had to, dis to, to keep him away. And he used an angel to help him in this. Let's go for forward in history. Uh, angels were present at the time when Abraham was told that a son would be born uh, to him. And at that moment, he was a hundred years old. His wife was 91. They, she, he was nine years older than she. And at, at a certain moment, God came and said, you, you shall have that son that I have promised. And, and uh, 
there were, God was present in his tent, but there were uh, two angels that, are, that were accompanying him. Uh, you find that in Genesis chapter 18. And they said, and they, they said unto him, uh, uh, where is Sarah your wife? And he said, she's in her tent. You don't understand that until you <laughs> know the, 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 the desert way of living. Uh, a man never gets close to a woman's tent unless he wants to die immediately. And, and uh, the women live in their own tent, the men live in another tent. So uh, she was in her tent, a tent made especially for, for women. And, and he said, I will certainly return to thee according to the, uh, to the time of life and, and, and to Sarah, your wife, that, uh, that, that she have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door. Uh, she was listening pretty carefully there because normally those doors are like 20, 30, 40 steps apart, uh, uh, which was before them. And so God saw fit to have an angelic escort with him uh, when he delivered the news that the seed of the Messiah was starting now, Abraham, then Isaac, then, and, then, and then Jacob. And so right, right straight through until the Lord Jesus Christ came. He was to use angels uh, to, to be with him when he was doing exceedingly important things. And this was a, the most important thing in the world was to bring a Messiah. So this was truly an important moment. And so uh, he said, uh, I have angels along here with me. And then, uh, in, the, in the third place, but before Jacob became a nation, angels appeared unto him. Uh, they appeared unto him in Genesis uh, chapter, chapter 28. And, uh, and you have it, uh, verse 11 through verse, through verse uh, 15, uh, there telling you how angels were very apparent. When a man was being... Uh, made and recreated into in the posterity of, 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 the, of the messiahship, you see. And, and so uh, angels were present at that very dramatic moment in history also. Then at number four, when, when Joshua had more than he could uh, carry, you know, more, more than he was able to take care of, an angel came to advise him. And you, you find that in Joshua chapter 5 and in verse 15. And the captain of the Lord's host, he was about to lose that battle, you see. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, uh, Loose the shoes off thy feet uh, from off thy foot, for the place where on thy standeth is holy. And, and Joshua uh, did that. And the captain of the host came and fought on his side, but he was not equal to the enemy uh, and, and, and fighting power. And an angel says, uh, I'm here. I'm going to fight the battle of Jehovah here. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cause this battle to turn. You're going to win here, not lose. And so uh, we have them at a battlefront. Now, we could take the one thought and develop it very strong, uh, especially in secular uh, history, because uh, very remarkable persons have, have appeared on the, on, the, uh, on the war scene, especially when Israel was fighting for existence. They had amazing stories of persons that they didn't know who they were, what they were, and how why they were there and so forth, uh, that were as assisting them, uh, that they would not be uh, taken off the face of the earth, and that Israel, after it had already been born, would not suddenly die. And so uh, they, were, they were there to help and, and to uh, strengthen. The number five, an angel uh, ministered uh, faith unto Gideon. <laughs> an angel said unto him, O oh, thou mighty man of God and man of valor. And he seemed to be everything but that. He was in hiding at that moment, uh, hiding from the enemy. Uh, but 
God was speaking prophetically here because immediately he became something else. When, when, when he had 32,000 soldiers and God turned them back until he only had uh, 30, 300, it took a lot of courage to go out to war with 300 men against tens of thousands of people. But he knew that the same angel that spoke to him and called him a mighty man of valor was going to continue to be with him. And so here we find again an angel uh, participating in an area of conflict, an angel participating in an area of war. An angel showed uh, Daniel the scoop of Gentile history. The, it, it, this is one of the uh, um, amazing ones, uh, of course. In, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 21, he says, And I will show thee. So God had delivered unto him the knowledge of, of the Gentile world. I, I think I've, I've, I've told you about that. Uh, there was never a world empire, though the devil wanted one very bad. There was never a world empire until Israel backslid. When Israel, when Israel lost God, lost his contact with God, Babylon was born. Now, the world empires only lasted 400 years. And that is from Malachi to John the Baptist. During her backslidings, it's when the devil produced his empires. And the spirit of those empires are still destroying the world today. The spirit of those empires, you know. The Babylonian spirit uh, has to do with that of, uh, of, uh, of sorcery and witchcraft and so forth. Uh, and uh, they called them the Chaldeans. That they, they had a relationship uh, with, with, with demon power. And then, then you have the Persian Empire tremendously related to sex and, and, and to immoralities. And you have both of those spirits functioning today, you see, very, very strong. And then you have the Grecian Empire, uh, which had to do with humanism, say that man was his own God, every man was as good as God, great as God, and, and so forth. And, and so you had a, a, a relationship here where man turned completely away from God and became his own savior, you know. God only knows every university in the world teaches this stuff today, coming right out of the lips of the Greeks uh, during the time of the apostasy of these people that should have known God, served God, loved God, and didn't do it. And then you have the fourth empire, uh, that one of Rome, that persists until this moment and will only terminate with the Great Tribulation, with the Ten Toes, uh, representing ten kingdoms that shall stand up against Christ, and that will terminate the world, the world of empires. And all through those empires, uh, God used angels in order to convey messages uh, uh, for him. So he conveyed messages uh, related to the Babylonian Empire, and the Medes and the Persians Empire, the Grecian Empire, and the Roman Empire. And, and so uh, I hear God was in war, and, and here God was in politics. Isn't that amazing? There are a lot of people that think that good people shouldn't bother with politics. They're the only ones that should, really. They're the only ones that should. Why put the devil up there to make our laws for us? Why put perverts up there to stop perversion? Are you here? Uh, I, don't, I don't know who told us to stay out of it. Uh, they, they said it was filthy. Well, tell me something that isn't filthy when filthy people get a hold of it. They make it filthy. Nothing is evil of itself. It's only evil when evil gets a hold of it. So if we can deal with the evil, then nothing is unclean, providing you do what's right. Can you say amen? Now, and, and number seven here says, when the world needed a savior, angels, uh, angels ministered in a remarkable way. And Luke, 1 and 30, and the angel said unto Mary, I fear not, Mary, uh, for thou hast found favor uh, with God. And so here, the announcement that there'd be a world savior uh, came through one of these beautiful creatures that God has created. It's, it's, it's very possible that he has 10,000 different other types of creatures that the Bible had no place to talk about. 
uh, for your convenience or for mine. And so when we get to heaven, there'll be amazing surprises at what God has there. Not only surprises, but tremendous joy that when we see uh, the, the, how God makes things and does things. The, the, the human mind cannot conceive with its limited knowledge. I uh, cannot conceive of all that God is able to do. But uh, I, just, I just want to be ready for it, don't you? But what we are studying in this lesson primarily is that in, in, the, in human lives, now uh, we could, of course, back this up in the, my own life and others, where things happened that had to be of an angelic nature uh, because it was not a humanly possible situation, but God did it anyway. And, and so uh, th these things, I believe, are going to happen more toward the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we get nearer to his coming, we're going to see more of the supernatural. We're going to see more of God communicating to man in, in the highest levels. And the angels are those who stand around his throne. That is the highest level. So the angels were present at the birth of Jesus. In Luke 2 and 8, uh, it says, And there were in the same country shepherds, uh, watching their field, keeping watch over them. And lo, the angel of the Lord... He is a very particular angel. I don't know where we have studied him uh, very particular. Uh, but th this is a designation of, a, of, of an angel that's called uh, Jehovah's angel. That he, he stands out as the one that when he wants to do something. Uh, some have called this, this person the Lord Jesus, you know. But I, I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, when you don't know about something, it's a lot better to keep your mouth shut until you learn something than it is to talk and then wish you hadn't said anything. Uh, but uh, uh, this angel of the Lord was the one that appeared to Joshua and says, I am the angel of the Lord, you know. And, and so he has a, a very specific uh, person uh, that is called. And he says, I am the angel of the Lord. And, and, and says he, uh, he came upon them in the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid and so at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ they said uh, peace on earth goodwill uh, toward men and so they they were there they were there at, at a most strategic moment uh, when the Savior would come to the earth then they were there to, to verify uh, to, to make people sure that this thing was is exactly what God said it would be and it was a, a complete thing. But, I, but I, I'm, very, I'm very conscious that it is difficult in the world that you and I live in, uh, the type of world we live in, for us to move into an area like this. I asked the Lord in the last 48 hours, I said, Lord, how can this nation uh, uh, ever move into this supernatural thing that we that we want to move into. And the Lord said, there's only one way to move in. And says the primitive people of the earth already have it. And that is prayer and fasting. And they don't want to do either one. They're too busy to pray and too hungry to fast. And so if we are going to refuse the elements that bring, that bring God closer to us, then we will not be able to, to see the supernatural as, as, others, as others see it. Uh, now, now, we could, you know, lengthen that out and tell you how uh, that, that in China and also in places in Africa, the people have long sessions. In, in, in China, they say, if we want to take a whole province for God, uh, we fast for 30 days and nights together. Together, 30 days and nights. And, and the Holy Spirit tells us the direction to go, the where to turn, and what to do, and what's going to happen. The angel of the Lord talks to them and tells them these things. But who in our acquaintance has time? Oh, he is so loaded with being busy. Uh, you, you know, when a pastor calls me up and says, Brother Summerall, I am so busy, I always respond the same way. I said, you are not busy. You are confused. Uh, and if you can get the confusion out, two-thirds of the things you do are not worth anything, nothing. Just pure nothing. They're not worth anything. And if you'd get that out of there, 
and get back to the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you would then discover something very, very wonderful. And that is Christ is real. The power of God is real. And that God in these last days, as he has at these great times of human history, appear in a supernatural way and help us, guide us, and inform us. And all the people said. And so angels were present at Jesus' birth, and uh, angels were present at Jesus' resurrection. In Matthew 28 and 2, it says, And there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord. I don't remember where I gave a whole lesson on the angel of the Lord or not. But I, I, I think we better go back and create one. And it says, that this was a very specific person. It says, uh, just as the one that we were reading to you that appeared uh, to the shepherds, the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone uh, from the door and sat upon it. That, that meant complete and total victory. Just sat on top of it. It maybe have taken 12, 14 uh, different Roman soldiers to push that heavy stone in front of that whole door. But it only took the angel his little finger and it was gone, you see. I'd rather work with his strength than man's strength uh, because he can do more for us than man can do. And all the people said, now it says, in number eight, when, when the keys to the universal salvation had to be used, an angel was involved. Now, now, let's look at it real carefully. Cornelius knew and served God. We don't know how much he knew about uh, Jehovah God. But he had a heart reaching out ter- tremendously for a living God. And he needed some information. You know, God is not ignorant. God doesn't deal in ignorance. So you've got to get where God is talking in order to know what God wants you to say. And an angel appeared unto him, instructing him where to go uh, and that for the help he needed. Now that's in Acts chapter 10. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him uh, from Cornelius and said, Behold, I, I, I am he whom you seek. He, he, knew, he knew who they were and and what they had come for. Uh, what is the cause for your coming? And, and, and they said, Cornelius uh, the centurion, a, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of a good report among all, all the nation of the Jews, uh, was warned uh, from God by an, an holy angel. Isn't that amazing? A uh, holy angel to send for you and to, hit, and to bring you to his house and to have words with you. And, and so uh, we, we see the angel of the Lord uh, bringing this gospel to the Romans. God only knows where it went from there because he brought his whole household and all of his friends in and they all received. And Peter was amazed. He heard them speak in tongues as they did on the day of Pentecost, that God had blessed them in the same way. And then when we get to the book of Revelation, of course, from the first page to the last, it tells you the function, the operation of angels. We just want you to know that God worked with persons just like you, no different from you. Persons just like you, God had worked with humans just like all of us and reveal supernatural power or knowledge and that God is the same today. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. And may may the Lord bless you. Give the Lord a hand, everybody. Uh, In in our next session, we're going to talk about what kind of people do, do angels uh, have a relationship with and, and talk to and bless and so forth? And I think this will help all of us because many times the devil puts in our heart, oh, God won't do this for you. Well, he, he don't know much about it, and maybe nothing at all. Uh, God will deal like with Cornelius. You know, Cornelius was seeking after truth, and God says, I'll open up the source of truth to you. 
and he accepted it when it was brought in uh, through Peter and it says I accept this and I believe it and so forth so uh, great things are ahead really angelic activities are ahead and I just hope <laughs> that my my own personal life will be in a relationship to where God can use it uh, in these last days and I hope that all of us all of us can can uh, experience a uh, phenomena that comes from God through his his ministering spirits called angels and all the people said give the Lord a hand everybody